about what's the most efficient way to build a building? Square or oblong or uh, rectangular? Square? Who says rectangular? Everybody says square? Who, who, what is the most efficient way to build a building? Square or rectangular? And who doesn't care? <laughs> well, I don't give a damn. <laughs> yeah. Let's look at it. If you're going to build a building, and you build a square building that's 100 by 100, how many square feet do you have in that building? 10,000. You have 10,000 square feet. If you were going to build another building that's 20 feet, um, what would be? Well, let's say 50 feet by 200. How many square feet do you have in that building? 10,000. Well, when you're building these two buildings, if you're going to build this building, how many lineal feet of wall do you have to build? You have 100 plus 100 is 200, plus 100 plus 100 is 200. You have 400 lineal feet of wall that you have to build to get 10,000 square feet of usable area. If you're going to build this building, how many lineal feet of wall do you have to build? You have to build 500 lineal feet in order to build the same 10,000 square feet. Ah, now don't get too excited about this. Why is it that you don't see more square buildings? It comes down to what we're talking about right here. Column spacing, bay depth, clear span. The reason is this. If you're going to, you can't build a building that's 100 by 100 without doing a lot. You need to put some columns in the middle to hold up your trusses. Isn't that true? If 25, square, uh, 25 lineal feet would be a good number, and it's, you know, maybe a little high, but if you've got 25 feet, then on 100 feet, you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you've got 25 feet, 100. So you've got <clears throat> column here, column here, here, and here. Uh, it's going to be the same thing going across. So what you're going to end up with is a column here, here, here. In, now, uh, the columns that I'm showing you now are the columns in the middle of the space that you're trying to work with. Does this create a certain inefficiency all by itself? Absolutely. With this building, if you've got 50 and we're working with 25, what we're really going to have is just one row of columns down the middle. Now, what that creates is a thing called <coughs> column spacing, which creates day depth, which creates clear span. Clear span becomes important because in here, if you have, this, is, this could be one back. Uh, it, you could <coughs> make it two bays here, but even in this two bay piece of real estate that you're renting, you only have one column that you have to worry about in the middle. Does that make sense? If you're using warehouse space, it's usually for some kind of storage or where you're moving things around, and you're going to have some kind of equipment or machinery within that space to move things around with. And the more, the clearer the span, the more marketable the space is, tenants, particularly who have larger pieces of material that they have to make. So even though, and by the way, it's, it's really not cheaper <clears throat> when you build this because as soon as you get into something this big, unless you put in all these columns, you have a, a you've created a tremendous additional expense in trust strength to span the space. Uh, actually, Gary's going to come up in a little bit and he's going to talk to you about a building uh, property that he has in uh, uh, Fort Lauderdale, where the tenants wanted a certain amount of clear span. But they had to almost triple, I think, the, size, the cost of trusses in that section in order to create it. Uh, but the point of it is, uh, your bay depth, your clear span are all important considerations when you're starting to look for these kinds of properties, because that has impact on the types of tenants who are going to want to come.